Hi! Welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, I successfully assembled the 3D printed mechanical parts for the AR4 MK3 robot. In this video, I'm going to show you the next step, testing each stepper motor individually. Here's the wiring setup I used for the motor testing. I'm using an Arduino Uno and a button to trigger both clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. Only four wires from the motor are used, black, green, red, and blue, which are connected to the driver as A+, A-, B+, and B-. This is a simple Arduino code I'm using to test the stepper motor. It allows the motor to rotate using two buttons, one for clockwise, and the other for counterclockwise direction. Let's start testing the stepper motors, beginning with the J1 motor. After connecting the motor wires to the driver, I'll test the motor by rotating it clockwise and counterclockwise to see if the J1 joint moves smoothly without any resistance or abnormal sounds. For the dip switch settings on the driver, switches switch 1 through switch 6 are all set to on. This configuration determines the micro-stepping and current settings needed for proper motor operation. Next, we'll test the J2 motor. Move the J2 joint forward and backward. When moving it forward, make sure to hold the back part of the robot to prevent it from tipping over. When moving it backward, stop the motor once it touches the limit switch, or a 3D printer and stop if you're using one, to avoid over travel and protect the joint. Next, let's test the J3 motor. During this test, Make sure the robot moves smoothly without any slipping or sudden jerks. A smooth and controlled movement is important to ensure precision and prevent wear on the mechanical parts. If you notice any unusual behavior or inconsistent motion, it's a good idea to open the J2 arm cover to inspect the belt mechanism inside. Sometimes the belt may be a bit loose, which can cause slipping or uneven movement. If needed, you can adjust the belt tension to make it tighter, this will help improve the smoothness and stability of the J3 joint motion. Next, we'll test the J4 motor. The J4 joint is responsible for rotating the lower arm or wrist section sideways, around its vertical axis. During the test, the movement should be smooth and consistent as the wrist rotates left and right. This axis is crucial for precise wrist control, especially when the robot needs to adjust its orientation during tasks like pick and place. Next, we move on to testing the J5 motor. During this test, I noticed that when the J5 motor moves, the J6 motor was hitting the J5 housing, which prevented proper movement. To solve this issue, I removed the top part of the J6 motor encoder. This made the J6 motor slightly shorter, allowing enough clearance so that it no longer hits the J5 housing. With that adjustment, the J5 joint can now move smoothly without any obstruction. I removed the cover to get a clear view of the belt movement and the J5 carrier, to check if there were any obstructions or issues causing rough motion. If needed, we can adjust the belt tension or inspect the movement of the carrier along the rod to ensure everything moves freely and smoothly. Once the J5 belt movement is confirmed to be smooth, we can reattach the cover and run another test to confirm that the J5 motion is now stable and working properly. And finally, we have the J6 motor, which is responsible for rotating the gripper. After successfully testing all the motors and making any necessary adjustments, we're now ready to move on to the next step, wiring all the motors and drivers, including the limit switches and the main controller. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video.